Thank you everyone for joining us for another episode of Above the Tree Line. We are here with ACF Senior Pastor Will Davis Jr. Hello, I hello, am hello. Lauren Thurston. Hello, Will. Hello. And we are joined by a wonderful Back for our re- our second yes, performance. Yes. Miss Layla Cunningham. Um, I am so excited that you are here with us today. You know that I adore you, and you've had such an impact on my life. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, I just really, I think that you have experienced so much in your life at such a young age, and um, I would love just to get your perspective um, on, especially during this season, hope. Um, I want to share a little bit or have you share a little bit about what you have walked through kind of at a high level. And, um, I just think that your, your story is impactful. Um, and I think that you are just, you're inspirational. You're still walking Mm. through it. Um, but I just want to give you an opportunity to speak. Can we insert, we didn't ask her to do, we didn't ask you to do this. We did not say, Hey, come tell your story on the air. Right. You've offered and you're humble about it. And we, we 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 want to honor your your story is your story. Mm-hmm. If you want to share it, we said let's go. But we didn't want to in any way treat take advantage of your story. Is all I'm trying to say. So mm-hmm. here we are. Yeah. And we just love you. So yeah, a lot. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your story? Okay. Um, so I got baptized in 2015. I grew up in a, a Christian home. My parents went to church. Um, my brother and sister got baptized with me and my dad baptized us. Um, and then about a year and a half ago in March, 2022, uh, spring break, me, my whole family, um, was up in Arizona visiting my brother's school and we got in a car accident. Um, it killed my parents and my sister was in a neck brace for about eight weeks. Um, she fractured something in her neck. Um, and Hmm. from then on out, it's just been... Me, my brother, and my sister. Mm. Yeah, I can imagine. So how has all of this affected kind of your relationship with God? Like, I'm, I mean, I, I know there's probably been good days and bad days and ups and downs. Um, yeah, I mean, it's only been a year and a half, which is um, terrifying um, because I have a whole life to live. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think... There's not one right way to go about um, processing or grieving. And I think a lot of the world wants everybody to have the same mindset and for everyone to be okay. And I don't think, I think people get the rep that if I'm not processing it this way, then I'm doing it wrong. Mm. And I don't believe that's true. I think everybody grieves and copes differently with Mm -hmm. loss um, from a parent, brother, sister, whatever it is. Um, And... The past year and a half, I've gone through a lot of different emotions, um, anger, sadness, um, me thinking it's not real Mm. um, is a big one. Um, And I think that, you know, as I went on and I was angry at God for, you know, a good six months, and I just realized, uh, you know, me being angry isn't helping me in any way. I found myself at my lowest point. and I wanted to get out of there, and I just didn't know how, because um, my mind wasn't my mind wasn't thinking turn to God, mm. and necessarily um, it was just thinking like you need to just make it to the next day, which is okay to think that like if I make it through today, like I can get through tomorrow. But how I was doing it was just like like you need to just get to bed, like survive so you can go to bed and not think about it, I guess, mm. and. Um, it wasn't doing anything for me, so I I decided that I needed to just change my mindset first, and so I did that. How did you know it wasn't doing anything for you, that your anger yeah. wasn't serving you well? At the time, it was making me be more angry at other people. So my anger towards God also was at other people, and it was making me not the person I was um, because I think also grief changes you and loss changes you in a lot of ways. It makes you grow. And so I think me being angry towards God and then I um, did it towards people also and it made me feel really bad about myself because those people that I was angry at did not deserve it. They were there for me. Um, they loved me and I and I didn't give that back to them and I realized, like, Layla, those are your family members. Like, you should not be doing that. 
Mm-hmm. You, they do not deserve it. So you decided, you just kind of made a mental shift where you were like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to carry this anger anymore. Like, how did you, how did you kind of change direction from that? Like practically. Yeah. So I think that, um, when I was thinking, like I said earlier, that there's not one right way to grieve. And I think what I was thinking of, like, you have to do this. And so it was making me not be able to do it. So I changed it from, you know, this is the only way to, like, there's multiple ways to do it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And, you know, give myself, like, love and time and patience. And I wasn't doing that before. I was just like, this needs to be fixed. Mm-hmm. And it, like, and I wasn't getting the results I wanted because I wanted it very quickly. And I had to give myself time to do it. And so once I started giving myself time and every day saying, change one thing about your day or what you don't like, just change one thing. And then it just kept growing on top of it. And I still, I, I'm still angry. Um, the anger's still there. It's just very lessened mm. for sure. Talk about the role that writing played. I know you did a lot of writing. Mm-hmm. To, that That's brilliant. And I think we have people in our audience who do a lot of that or could talk about that. I started writing when I got to college my freshman year, um, about five, five months, months ago. ago. Yeah. <laughs> five recent. months ago. Five months ago. Remember I, that time you went to college five yeah, months ago? You know, I made it. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I started writing because I went to college um, away from my sister. I'm, twin, I'm a twin. So I've been with her all 18 years of my mm-hmm. life. And I found myself you know, being away from home um, by myself in a new environment. And there was so much emotion in me. And I was like, I have to get this out somehow. So um, I was just sitting alone every night, and I just started writing. Um, I wrote down all my feelings, good or bad. Um, And it was anger towards God, anger towards myself. And, you know, it was every emotion that I was experiencing. And I wrote almost every night. And it kind of helped, like, during the day, relieve some of all my, Mm. what I was thinking in my head. Yeah. That makes sense because you weren't holding it in anymore. Yeah. There was an outlet mm-hmm. for it. Mm-hmm. So how how much, I mean, do you have like books and books now that you've basically filled? I have a couple, I have probably like 50 pages. A lot of what I write is poems, so they're not very long. Um, they're just quick little what I'm feeling in the moment. Wow. I don't know. I'm just sitting here looking at me. I forget that you're only 19 years old. I know. Old. The wisdom here is killing me. She's so the, I'm not, we're not, we're mature. Just, I'm, no, I'm serious. The wisdom here is absolutely killing yeah. me. Yeah. I mean, just for you to be able to make that shift where you're like, this isn't working. I'm going to do something else. Because I know several months ago, I guess right before you went to college, yeah. um, you and I met mm-hmm. and we ate some delicious hamburgers and milkshakes. And yeah. you... At that point, there was something very different in you from the last time that we had hung out, and you were just like, "I'm make, I'm just making good choices. I'm like, I'm taking care of myself physically," um, and you just had this drive all of a sudden that really just kind of seemed to come um, out of nowhere. Where do you think that that came from? It was definitely um, a hard process. It, it didn't take like a couple days. I'm going to be honest. Uh, beginning of summer, so I have to train for soccer, mm-hmm. um, for college, obviously. And so I was just like, my mindset definitely changed from just like, it needs to be done now to like, whatever's going to happen is going to happen and it's God's plan. And I need to just, you know, be okay with that, work hard. My biggest thing is for myself is to work hard. And I think that's where all of it came from. And it's a struggle every day to be like, okay, Layla, like you got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do this. Like it's, it's not easy. Getting up is probably the hardest part of my day. And so when you, when you just say work hard at everything you do and it's not going to be easy, it's going to be a struggle. But day after day, when you keep doing it, it's going to get a little easier each day. And I think when I started training and physically I was working on myself, um, working out, um, and it just got to the point where physically like, me being in shape made me a little bit happier mm. as well. Yeah. I remember we were talking about that because then I was mm-hmm. like, man, I'm so not in shape. Oh my gosh. I probably should yes, you are. Take a page out of that book. <laughs> yeah, why are you not saying that I'm in shape? I'm sitting Oh, no, you're so in shape. Look at, look at Layla's well, face. So oh, no, yeah. you're in shape. You've said, you've said, because it's all about me, apparently. <laughs> so you said, you've written some 
stunningly insightful things about grief. Just if you give me, talk off the top of your head, no pressure, about something you've learned about grief because you've walked it. What did you learn about grief? I learned that grief is basically the love you had for that person with nowhere to go because they aren't here anymore. And so I think, like, for my parents, I had so much love for them, and I think it just hurt to know I couldn't love them and they couldn't love me like that again because they aren't here. Um, but like I said earlier, I think um, grief is hard and it's a process and it's not going to be fixed. I'm still, like, guys, it's been a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Like, let's be real. I'm still grieving and I will be grieving. Um, but it's it's a process that takes time. And however you decide to go through it, it's okay. Like, don't let people tell you that how you're grieving is wrong mm -hmm. because it's not. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing for people because they get in their mind, I'm not doing this the right way and I'm not going to succeed in anything because I'm doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. And th I think that's what hurts people the most mm -hmm. is believing that they're not doing it right and they won't ever come out of it. Because when you're in it, it's hard to think that there's hope and mm -hmm. there's something good. It's very hard when you're when you're down at your lowest point, mm -hmm. I think. And not to say that I won't have any more low points because I, I probably will because, you know, mm -hmm. every day it's a process. Um, but I think as long as you're living, there's hope. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was going to ask you is do mm -hmm. you feel a sense of hope at this stage? I do. Um, it comes and goes. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think, you know, as long as you're here, as long as you're trying, um, and some days you might not be trying, and that's okay, mm. and you have to give yourself grace. Mm -hmm. um, mm. But, yes, I think God has a purpose. I know for me, um, God has a purpose for me and why I'm still here and why I was sitting where I was sitting in that car. Mm. Um, it took me a minute mm -hmm. to realize that um, because it, it hurt of, you know, I could have been the one mm. to be sitting in that seat. Um but, yeah, I'm, there's a reason I'm still here, and I believe that. And I believe God has something. And I may never know it till I get to heaven, mm -hmm. but I think God has something, purpose for my life. When you're in those moments where you're not feeling hope, how do you, what do you do, like, to find hope? That's a good question. Um... Because, I mean, honestly, it doesn't matter how much of a mature, like how long you've been walking with Christ. Yeah. I mean, Will and I were talking about this yesterday. As mature Christ followers, we still find ourselves in these pockets of hopelessness. Um, and, I mean, I have to be totally honest and, and disclose that. And there have been times where yeah. I just, like, my personal process was reaching out to somebody and being like, I'm not in a good place. Um, and then that person telling me exactly what I already knew, which is, like, you need to get in the presence of God. But at the time, yeah. I was like, I don't want to. Yeah. Like, I just want to stay mm -hmm. in this place of hopelessness. Um, but for me, like, worship was a big part of it. Um, just like even just having, I don't know, worship music on because you may not feel like worshiping, but God is still worthy. And that's that's what I have to keep telling myself. I'm like, I don't feel like singing today, but God is mm -hmm. still worthy of my praise. His character hasn't changed just because my circumstances are yeah. bad. And so I was just wondering if you had any, like writing is, is the thing that you do. Um, is that kind of how you get in the presence of God? I would say yes. I would say it's hard to see hope when you're like like you said like like I don't really like want to mm -hmm. um and it took me a minute to figure out like if I put my trust in God and I'm not saying like I think this every day like I'm just like I'm putting my full trust in you like this is the only way but I know now like it's in the back of my head like I trust God like he will always be there and that's why I will always have hope but I think when you're at those times where you're like, I don't see it, it's hard. It's, it's definitely hard to think about, you know, actually having any. Um, but I don't actually remember what I did mm -hmm. to find hope. I have to bring in the troops. I get despairing and sad and alone 
in my thinking. And often I have to have friends talk me out of it. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, well, let's, let's go 50,000 or 50,000 50, years view mm-hmm. on this thing. Because I can really get sucked in a dark place. And I don't always have the... I want to say I'm a, enough of a self-leader to pull myself out of it. And sometimes I can, but sometimes I can't. Mm-hmm. And I've got very godly men around me and a very godly wife. who I'll just go help. Yeah. And they'll say, okay, let's... let's Let's, and I'm, you and I have gotten to do some of that. Let's, let's do 50,000 feet on this thing and look at the bigger picture. But sometimes it's you got to ring the bell and say, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you did when you reached out to your friend, mm-hmm. talk me off this And ledge. it's embarrassing to be like, I'm a pastor and, and you know I am hopeless. Elijah the prophet, you know, 18, he has chapter 18, he has a victory in first Kings, second, next chapter. He's like, I want to kill myself. Literally. Mm-hmm. He was so despairing. So you're gonna, we're going to have those things. And that's why community, mm-hmm. and you've got great people around you. Mm-hmm. You really do. But we all need, if you're listening to this thing and you're in that hopeless spot, mm-hmm. get some, yeah. ring the bell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get somebody in I your agree. world. Because it, it's, 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 otherwise it, it, the lies will overwhelm you. Mm-hmm. So you and I talked about this before. I'm writing a sermon on hope right now, hope for mm-hmm. the future. And you basically just summed up, she's just like, God's never going to leave me. Therefore, I have hope. Like, that's it. So can you just be that brief when you preach? Yeah, in a couple that's weeks? all I'm going to say. <laughs> Bible says God won't leave you. Therefore, you have hope. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're just brilliant for for your age. I'm, I'm so impressed by, by Leah, you. Leah, I'm so sorry for what you've been through. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I adore you. And... Um, You've handled it so well. I don't. I've, I've told her. You know, you, you've walking out something most people never have to walk out, mm-hmm. and you're doing it with such grace. Um, don't let that create pressure for you or expectations for you. You permission to have bad days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're going to. But I know you. I've gotten to know you and your family pretty well, and I'm just blown away by you. And mm-hmm. I'm so sorry for your loss. Still, thank you. I'm really sorry for your loss. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, when I see like, when I think about 30, 40 years down the road, it's terrifying. Because it's only been a year and a half, and you know, I, the emotions I've been through in a year and a half has been a lot. And then I think about thirty years combined, and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like so scary, you know. Um, and having to live my life without them here mm-hmm. is, it's like gut wrenching, and it's yeah. it's hard um, to think about that. Um, but like y'all said, leaning on people, and I think these past five months, God has put so many new people mm-hmm. in my life that I know he wants them there for me. Um, and I've leaned on them. I have two amazing friends I met in college that, you know, love me and want to learn more about me and are always there for me. And, um, you know, I think God put them in my life to say, you know, there's people here for you. Mm-hmm. Even when you go off to college and you're not in your own community where mm-hmm. everybody knows. There are people, when I, just, when I started college, nobody knew my story. But then God put my two friends in my life to be like, tell us your story. We're here. Mm-hmm. And we're going to stay with you. So, so can I put you on the spot? Yeah, I'm going to anyway. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I'm, I'm going, you're going to do it anyway. I'm going to anyway. Yes, okay. you know me well. So talk yeah. to that person. We're almost out of time, but I want you to talk to that person out there who today feels completely helpless um, for whatever reason. They can't pay their bills. They're in a relational conflict. They've been through loss. You're 18 months into a hard walk, but you have hope today. What do you say to them? I mean, it's hard. Like, I'm I'm not here saying it's not incredibly hard, and it's um, it's a lot of you know mental games. Um, I would just say, like, you have to you have to stay with it. Like, I gave myself. I said. I'm living and there's no other choice, is what I told myself. Hmm. I said, I, I, I'm not leaving here. And I think, you know, when I, I had to say that to myself every day. Like, I'm not going anywhere. Like, I'm staying here. Um, and a big part of it for me was knowing how my parents would want me to live. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the days I'm like, you know, like, mm, no, not today. Like, I can't. Like, I didn't get out of bed. Um, but I think thinking about the bigger picture and not just how you feel in that moment, um, 
I think Mm -hmm. helped me, but I remember being hopeless. I remember not, not wanting to be here anymore. And so I understand that. Um, but I would just say you have to, you have to tell somebody else. Mm -hmm. You cannot keep it all inside. You have to, like y'all said, friends, Mm -hmm. like even if it's just one, one person, Mm -hmm. you have, you have to tell somebody and it helps. It truly does. You might be scared. It does help to talk to somebody Mm -hmm. about it. I was terrified. I was like, "Mm, no one, no one wants to know. No one cares about my feelings, but they do. I, I believe that. Yeah. What's it? What do you always say? When God's people cry out for God's help, God's answer is God's people. God's answer is God's people. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, let me just affirm you. You are one of my favorite people on the planet. I love you. I love, um, I'm so glad that you're in my life. And I just, I, I pray for you all the time. I think God is just going to use you in such mighty ways. Um, you are a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I'm, I'm so glad I get to just, see what he's doing in you. Um, well, and thanks for letting us in. This is, yeah. this is hard. Yeah. And this is your, your, your story is holy ground, Layla. Mm-hmm. And it's yours to tell. So thank you for sharing it with us and the people that listen to this podcast, because it will encourage them. Yeah. I promise you. Absolutely. All right. Help. Well, thank you, Layla. <laughs> we love you. Thank you guys. And thank you guys for joining us for this very special episode of Above the Tree Line. Um, this was this was a great conversation. We're glad that you guys could be be a part of it. Um, if you have any other questions or you want to dive into the the topic a little bit more, please feel free to do so at acfellowship.org/podcast. We are here for you guys, and we will see you next week. <laughs>